Yo, what is up, guys, and welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to be doing a review on the team of the season, Connor Gold. So, we're going to go through the card of as clips and summary before we get into all of that. If I could ask you guys to please hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, and that bell so you know when I upload and comment down below if you're going to be grabbing this card. And now, let's get into the video. So guys, the team that I used, Connor Goldson, and I played him in that center back slot, of course, next to Tavernier in that 4 to one that perfect thing with that Tavernier, the main reason that I wanted to go through this card. And my first impressions of this card, guys, this card is really good, really solid in the center back slot. Slower, as you would expect the center back to be, compared to the full backs, but nevertheless, a very good card. Getting into the card, Connor Goldson, 6-3, medium, medium work rates, right foot, he turns some of two-star weak foot, six games played, no goals scored, and no assists. Now, guys, two-star single moves, two-star weak foot isn't ideal. I would have liked a better weak foot, of course, especially on a centre-back, but uh, the two-star single moves, you can't really say much given he is a centre-back after all. The medium, medium work rates are actually okay, guys, but I feel like if they were a high defensive work rate, he would be a little bit better with his positioning, but overall, I think he's still pretty good, and his size at 6-3 as well is phenomenal. Really does make him a bit of a bully in that defence. In terms of chemistry style, I put shadow on him. I thought that was the one that fit him best, and we'll get into that more in the final summary with regards to the chemistry styles, which brings me into the key stats, the key pros and cons. The pros of this card, the passing range is phenomenal on this card, guys. Really, really great. Uh, and actually, he, you're able to play really well with this card, despite the fact that he's not maybe the quickest on the ball. Um, his physicality is tremendous as well. 96 strength, 89 jumping, 84 aggression, all fantastic. I feel like an anchor could do him a lot of favors as well, especially with boosting those extra factors around the physicality. Um, in terms of his defending as well decent stats guys not the best but decent enough to be able to use him in terms of the cons though guys the agility poor uh, and you do really struggle especially with moving with this card you'll see that in a couple of clips the stamina is a little bit low as well guys would have liked that to be higher 80s uh, ideally and his speed is good it just needs a little bit of helping hand because he is so big it does feel like he is a bit cumbersome at times but I feel like if you do help him out in that regard, he feels quick enough. In terms of player traits, he hasn't got any. So now that we've covered all that, let's get into some of the clips that I got with him. So guys, getting to some of Goldson's clips, and what you guys are going to see is his general ability to play that centre-back slot and how dominant he is in that role. Now, the first thing I want to get into, guys, is his pace. Now, I do think his pace is okay. Um, for the stage of the game that we're at, though, guys, and considering the, the players you'll be coming up against and how other people are using their forward players, now, particularly being quicker players, uh, faster players, and just generally better players as well, you will need to improve his pace uh, just to allow him to be able to compete against those elite attackers. Not to say that he will be better than any of them or be able to stand up to them in, any, in every case, but at least this gives you a better opportunity of doing so. Getting into... His dribbling guys now his dribbling is a real letdown for me i even think his reactions and composure are a little bit low so that isn't great guys in terms of his dribbling what i will say though is that given he is a traditional center back i would not be expecting his dribbling to be phenomenal i would much prefer if his defending and physicality were better of course and then the dribbling is a secondary factor which leads me into one thing which i was so impressed about with this card which is his passing his passing was really great guys just in terms of his range, his ability, the diversity of his passes as well, all of them were fantastic. And what he was able to do was control the back line there by playing the ball well, controlling the passes out, uh, and really keeping things calm and simple when I needed them to be that way. Which leads me on to the next thing about this card, which is probably the most important factor that we're going to talk about is the defending. Now, the defending is, again, very good. Uh, I do feel like it needs a helping hand just to make him an elite defender or be able to win those 50-50 tackles when the opponent might get away with some of the glitchy gameplay or something like that. This card then has the defending capability to be able to take the ball away and put in some crunching tackles like you guys are seeing. Which leads me into the next part of his game and probably the most important part of Goldson's game, which is his physicality. This card is a physical monster. He's big, six foot three, uh, really strong as well, powerful, big frame as well. Reminds me a lot of the centre backs like Van Dyke, like Upamecano, who have that physical presence in the centre back slot. Uh, really difficult to get past the ball, really wide, so that really does help him as well. But to go with that, guys, he has a fantastic passing ability, so it really is offset well. He's not just a big centre back that can't do any of the technical bits he still has some technical capability to him as well the next thing i want to get into guys is his medium medium work rates now guys his medium medium work rates didn't actually affect him too badly what it meant was that although medium medium work rates mean that they don't move that much because he sits in the base of that defense 
he wasn't adversely affected too much by them at times the play did go past him but you're able to recover fairly well with this card given his size and physicality so again medium medium work this didn't affect me too badly i thought this card was more than capable of playing with those medium medium work and when you have control of him for the most part you're able to dictate where he goes so that's another plus of that as well one thing I want to get into you guys, which you may have been noticing from all these clips as well, is his shot blocking ability. Now guys, he didn't have the dives into tackles trait. This card was incredible at blocking shots. He was just so big and long and the length of this card as well really does play into the fact of how well he does block things. You'll be seeing that over and over in the clips as you've been watching them as well. As we get into these final few clips guys, you're just going to see more of the same, more aggressive defending, more capability from this guy just to be able to shut out all different types of players, whether they're quick small fast tall big strong any of them he's able to compete and that's something that's really nice to have in a center back for such a reasonable price and he has that super link to tavernier this final clip here winning the ball back taking it out a nice little skill move as well and then playing out from there So guys, getting to this final Connor Goldson summary, 137 Kenner Playstation, 142 on the Xbox and 140 on the PC. Now guys, of course the key stats as we mentioned already, passing range is phenomenal on this card, I really do like that. I feel like his defending stats are good and his physicality is tremendous as well, so all of that works really well in playing in tandem with how this card plays. If you want a, if you want a chemistry style that I would recommend guys, the Shadow is the one that I went with, I think that did him a lot of favours and helped him out, especially with the pace element, he was then able to compete with almost anyone and given his size and how big he is and how much of a, how much of a bully he is, you're able to do a lot of stuff with that. Uh, if you wanted to put the anger on him, that would be a good way to go too, however it doesn't really give him that much of an aggression boost to where to the point it's like really elite aggression as well, so I feel like the Shadow is the best one to go with for me. In terms of similar players guys, I actually think Virgil van Dijk is a very similar player. The way this player is built, he's built wide. He's built a really powerful player. Very similar in sort of mold to Upamecano in how wide he is, how strong he is, how powerful he is. And even though his strength and aggression maybe aren't that, aren't as high as these other players that I'm mentioning, he feels just as wide. Tapsoba, another one there, who's just really wide, powerful player, uh, able to do a lot in that centre-back slot. And those are the kind of players I would liken him to. In terms of linkability... You've, of course, got perfect links to James Tavernier and Ryan Kent. Uh, both of those fantastic links as well, guys. Strong is, of course, to a bunch of English icons, uh, as well as other players from Rangers. Uh, if we got into the weak links as well, guys, you guys can see the amount of English players you can link him into. So there's also that as well. In terms of the price comparison, guys, you guys can see he sits right below the foot freeze. Jesus Navas, SPC, above all these icons here, below some here. And Fabinho's there as well. John Stones is there. Alessandro Bastoni's in there. Ruben Diaz. If you ask me how does this Connor Goldson stack up against Bastoni and Diaz, better, 100%. I think he's playing more at the level of Diego Carlos, Mario Hermoso. That's the sort of level that I genuinely believe this card is at. And I know he will dip below where he currently is at. So that leads me into my final recommendation. Given that I think he belongs around here somewhere. Of that, if you get a chance to pick up this card when he dips a little bit more in the week, he's 100% worth it, guys. Especially if you can link him into any form of Tavernier or Ryan Kent. Uh, you'll get an excellent option just to be able to finish off your defense. But he can be that lead center back in your defense. Which is actually surprising considering the price as well. I really Really do feel like this is a fantastic card hope you guys enjoyed this review if you did please do smash that like button until next time i will see you all in a bit